comments? All right. So if we look at the schedule today, uh, we are going to talk creating content WordPress, editing and formatting text in WordPress, uploading and using images in WordPress. We'll probably skip that for today and then do that on uh, Thursday. Uh, and then creating navigation menus in WordPress. Uh, in other words, once we create content, we're going to be creating pages and postings and then setting up a menu system. Uh, so I actually should uh, maybe you know, switch those in order, but does it really, really matter? Is anybody going to freak out because they're right, Frankie? All right. I'll be okay. You'll be okay? Okay. Um, so uh, your um, assignments that are due at the end of this week, install and set up WordPress and create template files. Um, what was due at the end of last week was choose your project site, uh, which means also put your client's staging area up and running. Uh, there's still a couple of people that did not get their client staging area up and running. Okay, so uh, again, for your choose your project site client staging area, I did modify the assignment slightly. Uh, don't worry um, if you did it the old way; you're still getting credit, right? But basically, again, what I need from you is a client staging area for your project will have links to view your templates and your proto site as well. I need you to create a GitHub account if you don't have one already and link to your code repository for your templates that will eventually become your theme for your proto site. So what I changed was you don't need to do a template repository and a proto site repository. Just create one repository that your templates go in and then you'll just work off that as your theme. So I updated my example Web 170 um, client staging area to reflect the changes that I made. So if you do want to go in and change it to reflect these, um, please do so. But what I need to do is I need to view your templates. So I want to be able to look at your homepage template home.html. I want to see your main page template, main.html. And then once you get your um, demo or your working WordPress up, site up and running, please link to it. So for instance, uh, we are here right now with our WordPress sites today where uh, I've installed a uh, pre-existing theme uh, that uh, I may keep using, I may not. I might just go back to uh, the default theme for now. Um, but right now, you need to, damn it, one way, shape, or form. Come on, you guys can have to do that every time you have to do it with me. Okay. Um, you need to be using a pre-existing WordPress theme so I can see that, yep, you're going to be adding pages and adding contents into it in a navigational schema, right? But again, I'm going to go back to, like, let's say uh, for the section one, I just went back to using the uh, 2016 theme. And here is then some content, and you can see the navigational schema in there. Lastly, I want a link to your repository, okay? So currently, your repository should just contain your templates, home, main, styles, right? And if you had anything else integrated into it, like I had Flex Slider uh, integrated into mine, so uh, I have a folder for scripts where The jQuery file is, and I have the CSS for Flex Slider, the fonts for Flex Slider are in there, and then images, any background images that I'm using uh, for, for my theme. Does that make sense to everybody? So those files and folders, those are in 
those are, yes, are pushed to GitHub as a GitHub repository. So how many of you are still having trouble with GitHub or just don't know GitHub well enough to do that? Okay, we should have time um, by the end of the week, you know, Thursday, right, to, to sit down. Today's Tuesday, right, Sherrod? Yes. Right, your name is Sherrod, right? Not Chad, because I called Chad Sherrod. And Sherrod, Chad. Sherrod. Right, Sherrod. Sherrod. Okay. Shh. Right? It's a, you know, it's a tongue twister. Yeah. Sure. Or about or something. Right? It doesn't really matter. You know, they could be named Poop 1 and Poop 2 for all I care, as long as I can see them. I'd like the names home in Maine, that'll let me know, right? But um, I wouldn't sweat it too much. Thanks, Alec. Yeah, right? You, you just caught that? Yeah, yeah. That was a delayed response back there. Uh, I'd like it home in Maine, but if you don't follow, if you don't have it home in Maine, am I going to dock you? No, as long as I can see the title, right? Okay, makes sense? As long as you have something to work with, that's all I care about. And it's making sense. Just the thing is, when you do open these, there's no includes in it. There's no PHP. It's all raw HTML from the doc type through all of the header information all the way down to the closing HTML, right? Again, so what you could have done is uh, take your Web 200 project, view source, copy and paste that source code into a new file. That's the easiest way to do it, right? Instead of going backwards, kind of engineering like that. Okay, clear as mud on that. Okay, so again, if you have not gotten your client staging area up and running, get it up and running and linked. I didn't see yours, I looked for it. Maybe you forgot to post a link on my site. Okay. I, I made sure, so in other words, if your name, if we go to 20 Springs 2017, if your name does not have a link to a client staging area, I could not find the link to your client staging area. I'm not going to call people out by name right now, Joss. Or Adam. Oh, I just called them out by name, didn't I? Okay. Is that wrong? In a little bit, it is. It feels good. It does? That you know my name. Okay, good. It's, so there you go. So it's, it's positive negative attention, right? Okay. So moving on, right? Um, just one question. So do you want the CSS files to be outside, not in the CSS folder, but together with the other files? Here's, here's how I'm going to answer that. When we start working and creating your theme, Okay, so for instance, if I go back here and I look at my demo repository, your style sheet is going to be at the same root level as your other. Okay, so I would recommend that you have your style sheet at the same level, or at least you are confident in knowing how to put it at the same level once we convert it, right? Um, because the pathways involved in WordPress are not as clear cut as go back one folder to access whatever, right? You know how you go dot, dot, slash. Does that go back to the root of the domain or is it one dot? I can never remember. Which one goes back to the root of the domain? Two. Two, right? You guys can't remember either, which makes me feel good. So what I'm saying is, when you do the dot, dot, or whatever, go back to the root of the domain and then look for a folder, well, if you go back to the root of the domain, then you have to look at a WordPress folder, in a WP content folder, in a themes folder, in your themes folder for images or whatever, right? So the path is really, really long. So therefore, I would avoid that convention, if at all possible, when you are working on this. Um. For the rest of the CSS files, just for cleanliness, can we keep all of our utility CSS files down? 
Here's what I'm saying. You can do whatever you want as long as you can engineer it. But if in the normal course of things, if our, if our header or HTML has a images slash something about CSS as in the link, and that's where it is in a folder called images, a folder called CSS, mm -hmm. CSS uh, right. it'll work. Possibly. I have to see the exact, in other words, I tuned out there for a second. Thanks, I would do. But, um, That's honest, right? Yeah. Right. In other words, just do what I'm telling you. Go to do what Mike says. Com. Sure. Okay. <laughs> what, what I'm hearing is that the style sheet, because the one we're modifying it. Yeah. What, 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 doing, what I'm hearing, like, what I'm hearing is we're spending too much time on this one subject right now. So what I'm saying is, for your regular style sheets, put it at the root. Do yourself that favor. And if you do have other style sheets like uh, the flex slider style sheet, you might want to put that at the same roots as well. That's just my suggestion. But if you don't want to heed that suggestion and you can get it to work however you want it to get it to work, I'm going to slow clap the hell out of you, right? And we're all going to have a good day. Does that make sense, Ron? Sure. Very good. Yeah. Oh my God, one more question. Yes, Dan. Where's your buddy? Which one? Chris, isn't he supposed to be here today? Uh, no, he's coming tomorrow. Um, the other day, whatever tomorrow, I guess. Do I need to remove the Google Analytics stuff from the main home HTML? Or can I just leave it in there? Or does WordPress get all resolved on that? Is it going to be on the same domain? Uh, no. Get rid of it. Okay. This isn't. You, these aren't going to be search engine. These aren't going to be indexed. Right. I would not. Because I just grab it off of the actual domain, right? So I wouldn't put analytics in these. Okay. Can I continue? Yeah? yeah. Thanks. You know that meme that be a dick, don't be a dick, oh my God, right? That's every day for me. It's a real struggle for me. It really is. So I'm, I'm sorry, Sylvia. I apologize. Huh? Okay. I know. But the look on Ron's face was like, dude, really? Do you have to? Do you have to? Right? Uh, let's make sure that I'm still recording this. Still recording. Okay. So going back then to what we're talking about, let's take a look at the next assignment. Create your content and menu system. Okay. So what you're going to have to do after you set up your WordPress site is we are pages and postings into your site. So that's the demo that I'm going to run through today. Okay. So you're going to have to create pages for your site. So if your project had uh, an existing sitemap navigational schema, right? Like your restaurant one. Okay. Flying line, that one, right? Uh, does it have sub pages? In other words, yeah, your page subject, yes. in other words, if you look at this right here, I want main pages yeah. and then sub pages. So I'm going to use about blog, contact portfolio, etc., logos, print websites for for mine. Okay, uh, we're going to insert some written content in there, um, and you are then going to create a menu system. Okay, uh, so. Take a look at this. Remember the, the text that we used? Uh, how many of you took the typography class for me, right? And I told you guys that you had to do, you know, a couple of headings, a couple of paragraphs, block quote, ordered list, et cetera, et cetera. So I would recommend that you possibly go to this get some HTML ready lorem ipsum. And here's what I'm saying. Again, I'm not a fan of the copying and pasting HTML or copying and pasting. I'm a fan of you guys writing stuff yourself. That being said, this is a nice block of code that, you know, this to me is not cheating by copying and pasting this. In other words, Frankie, you know how to write an H1 tag, don't you? Usually. Yeah, usually. In other words, when I say copying and pasting, I'm expecting you to not be copying and pasting big chunks of HTML and big chunks of CSS that you have no idea what it does. Okay, that, that's what I mean by that, 
Okay. So I am going to, yeah, no, go ahead, Ron. I just want to clarify that. If we use a, like a flex slider plugin or, or I've got something that does uh -huh. jQuery. Yeah, that's a plugin. That's, that's documented. Okay. Let me answer it like this. jQuery plugins, for instance, do I expect you to write this? No, it's an application that you're using. Instead, what I'm going to expect you to write to use this is – oh, I didn't put it in this file. I'm going to expect you to write this, okay? So when we get to putting Flex Slider into your website, right, you are then going to be writing out the PHP with then the HTML markup that then utilizes images within HTML, et cetera, to create the list items that then that Flex Slider API goes and accesses class of slides or a class of flex slider to run. Does that make sense? So yeah, and that is that to me is a plugin, right? That if you are documenting that as somebody else's work, for instance, if I go to flex slider CSS, right? I'm not taking credit for it. It's a plugin that I'm using. Okay, that to me is not. That's using a pre-existing something. Like I said, what I run into problems with is when uh, students have to build stuff in my 200 or 202 class, and all they've been doing is copying and pasting code, and then they have to build something that they designed, and they're like, "Oh, uh, I don't know how to build things." That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay, so going back to then here, let's go to the um, creating content with WordPress. So again, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be creating a series of, or we're going to create one posting, a temporary posting. We're going to create some other postings down the road, and we're going to create some pages. And then we're going to take a look at the content editor, uh, et cetera. Okay. So again, create a new posting. How did we get to that? that this? That, no. That page for WordPress? This. Yes. How did, where do you go to to get to that page? I'll get there. Don't worry. Oh, okay. So just look at the lecture. We're going to create a new posting. And we're going to create some new pages. So again, what's the difference between pages and postings? Frankie. I'm going to pick on you, Frankie, a lot in this class. Close-ish. I know what you mean, but let's say it like this. So if this is then the drawing that I drew up uh, a little while ago, and again, do you guys know how excited I get because when I go and reference my whiteboard drawings, they're on Flickr, and then they come up on the projector. I don't have to say, remember that thing I drew the other day, right, and not be able to, right? So, Calvin, this is so, I mean, it just rocks my world. So, 
But if we look at this, right, pages are typically part of your hierarchical information architecture, your site map, if you will, right? Remember in uh, Web 200 when we did the affinity diagramming, um, if you've taken Web 200 and we went through, you know, what is an information architecture and how to put one together, right? For a set of pages where if I have a, an, a question that I need answered, do you take this insurance? Possibly it's on a destination page down here somewhere or a sub page. Versus postings. So yeah, I've heard pages referred to as static content, right? Well, are they really static content? Because you can change them, right? They pull, they pull from a database, right? So I'll say timely content versus non-timely content, right? Hierarchical organization versus news, bloggy, timely stuff, right? In other words, an article, such and such date, right? So think of it in terms of you know, news website versus business website, right? Does that make sense? So let's start off by creating a new posting. So if I go to my spring 2017.02 demo, wrong link, that one. Let's uh, close some tabs here. Section two demo, section two demo. Okay, so Sherrod, this is where you go. Okay. If you have your WordPress install up and running, go to your WordPress install. If you are not logged into it, okay, you can always find your login after the, you know, so here's the domain I'm on, here is my WordPress folder, right? I'm calling mine spring 1702, right? If I then say wp-admin, if I'm not logged in, it'll bring me to the login page, okay? Hopefully you can remember your username and password, right, and log in. Again, if you can't do it with me, don't worry about it. Just hang out, enjoy yourself, Sherrod, and then watch the video and do it later, okay? Okay, are you? Well, so now that we're logged into our dashboard, right? Again, if I was taking this class, I'd just be chilling out and be like, okay, it's cool, and then go watch the video later. I wouldn't be trying to do it with me. So now that we're logged in, again, over in the dashboard over here, we have our typical navigation, posts, media, pages, comments, Contact, this one is if we installed Contact Form 7, this is now the navigation uh, for the admin portion for the Contact Form 7. We have appearance where we can see themes, menus, or widgets, background, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Editor, don't ever go there and edit things. We can see our plugins, we can see our users, some available tools, remember our settings where we futzed with some settings. So we want to go to posts. So again, if you go to posts, you will see a temporary posting right now called, hello world, here's what I want you to do with it if you see it. Trash it. Go to the trash. You can select all and say empty trash, okay? Now, I can now go back to the posts where if I look here, it says all postings, add new categories and tags. So right there, there's a clue to how postings work. Postings get categorized. They can also use a set of tags, right? So um, if you've ever been on a blog and it has a set of tags, right? That's one way to do a taxonomy for filtering of stuff. Another part of the taxonomy is categories. 
So if we look at then, let's just use my site here for an example. Again, I have a page called blog. When I go to the page called blog, it now shows me my blog feed. In other words, it's showing me all the timely content or the postings. So if I log into my website here, and I go under posts, what you are gonna see is a whole lot of postings that have an author, that have categories, that may have tags. I don't really use tags very much. You can also see that, wow, I meant to do this a long time ago. Last modified in 2012, and it's still not published. It says draft. I'll get to it eventually. Maybe, maybe not, right? So, uh, as well, if I go under settings, right, and we go under reading, remember that in my business sites, I have set my front page to display a static page, and I've set my blog page to be the postings page. Okay. Does that make any sense? Just run with me. That's how we're going to set things up. Okay. But for right now on our demo, if we go under settings, reading, currently our front page displays our latest posts. Let's just leave it like that for now because we're not ready yet to go in and uh, start futzing with those settings. We're not we're going to create a front page down the road. We're just not there yet. Okay. So now if I want to create a new posting, I can do one of two things. I can go here and say add new or this menu up here. Okay. So this menu right up here, then you say have new post, new media, new page, new user. True or false? Those are all post objects. Those are all post objects. Those are all post objects. That'd be true. Okay. So if down the road we put in, you put in. A plugin like an events calendar, right? New event, right? I also have links. This is a legacy one. Don't worry about it. But event is also a post object, it's a custom post object, okay? But going back to our demo here. I want to say new post. Now, in our editor, right panel, I can't remember what WordPress calls it. Let's go back to my lecture or I'm going to go back to my lecture because it's in there somewhere. The posts edit sub panel, which they've, man, they've started taking stuff out of the codex and tweaking it. Post screen. Oh, there's the post screen. I can't remember what it's called and they've moved it. Well, actually, let's go back to, hold on, I know. Uh, the right post sub panel. There it is. 
the right posts subpanel. This is our right post subpanel. So let's take a look at it, shall we? Enter a title here. You can name yours whatever you want. I just have a habit of utilizing warm ipsum for these things. It's there for me to use, so why not? Okay. This title, this title field right here. Right? So if I put something in that title there, then it theoretically should show up on my website somewhere using this function down the road, the title function, okay? We're not there yet, but that's how it's gonna generate. Here in the right sub panel, notice these two tabs right here, visual, text. Let's go to another file of mine. If I want to write new content, I can do so here in this sub panel. Okay. If I say publish, <coughs> I have now published a new blog posting. If I go and view it, Here's the title, it's written on April 19th. Here's some text, write content here. I am actually going to go back to my themes and I am gonna go use an Activate 2016. So um, it looks like my other section, okay? So here, we're on the home page. Look at the URL, right? We're on the home page. Here is then uh, an example of a link to then a page or a posting. New content here. Let's say I wanted to Put more content. Let's say I copied something and pasted something, like I just did like this. Why am I getting that box around it? It's in visual, but here's the thing. A lot of times for my school website, I will get people that send me these job listings that then they send it to me in a PDF or a Word file or something like that. 
and I copy and paste the text out of the Word file. And if I paste it then into here, this is a text editor that accepts HTML markup. So if we go to this text right here, which it used to be labeled code, I wish it was still labeled code. Notice there's a pre-tag around what I just pasted in there. Why would that be? Well, huh? Go ahead. Right. I copied this from a .txt file. If I view page source, this is what it looks like, right? So it just wrote a pre-tag a pre around it because that's how it translated it. So when you're pasting content into the text editor, if you are going to do that, you might want to then open the other options in the toolbar, right? So why this is not already open to begin with, I have no idea by default. Does, um, does uh, WordPress have the ability to get, let you choose different editors? No. You're, you have, yeah, this is the editor. Yeah. Other CMSs let you choose what editor? Yeah. Really? Well, I'm only familiar with Jira, but you want Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. Not only that, you can assign which editor, which user ends up with. So you can have a very primitive one that doesn't let them screw things up. Very interesting. On your end, you can have a very like code-based hmm. dream version. Okay. So what I'm going to do instead here is hit this button, paste this text. It's now in plain text mode. I'm going to paste that there. And close this. And delete that. I'm actually going to go back to this file, copy that, go back in here, select all, hit paste as plain text again. And what I can do now is it typically then will paste in as regular body copy paragraph tags, especially if you're just starting to Write something out from scratch, right? It defaults to the paragraph. I can then select this, and I can give it an H1, H2, H3, so on and so forth. I'm going to say H2. Uh-oh, what happened? Well, can you know, do you know what happened, Dan? There's not a hard return here. Now there's a hard return, meaning this is an P tag. Now that's in an H2 tag. Okay. So if I then go and do this, do that, separate out these headlines and paragraphs a little bit. I can then choose And basically, start editing text like it's a regular editor. 
updates and view post. All right? So again, based off of our theme, if we inspect, we can then see in this div class entry content, again, depending on how you set your theme up, the HTML is going to be a little different. But I have an H2 tag that is adhering to the 26, WordPress 2016 theme CSS file. I have P tags, I have H tags, I have UL tags, I have OL tags. If I go back and edit this post, if I then look at the text version here, you can see that it's given me markup in here, except for P tags. One of the annoying, there are a lot of annoying things about WordPress. I really wish that they would put P tags around the paragraphs, but they don't in WordPress, in the editor. I don't know why. I think it's dumb. I think they should, right? Uh, but nonetheless, there is some content, right? For you guys, when you do publish content, what I would recommend is, let's go back to my main demo. I would recommend that you utilize the whole gamut, right? Uh, just like we did in the type class. Now here, this is an H2 tag. So these are H3 tags. On the one that I just did here, this theme has it set up where I believe this is an H1, so I chose those H2s. Remember when we were in the type class and I told you some people use the H1 for your logo, some people don't? Who remembers me talking about that? Nobody? Okay. You guys are just shy about answering questions. Am I up here just talking to myself? I thought it might have been rhetorical. I wasn't there. <laughs> You're off the hook. He's not. So what I would recommend, this is where I would recommend this HTML Ipsum, right? where you might want to go ahead and grab this whole kitchen sink over here, copy it, don't do this, don't paste into the visual portion, otherwise you'll get code like that. Instead, if you have code, HTML in there, go to the text. And that's where you can paste that in there. And I'm going to get rid of this H1 tag. But eventually, what you're going to need to do is, when you are proofing your theme, you are going to need to check your themes styles for all your copy. So it's a good idea to, like I said, run the gamut of this um, uh, kitchen sink because you'll have a bold tag, you'll have, or you'll have a strong tag. Let's inspect it here. You'll have a paragraph tag, you'll have a strong tag, you'll have an M tag, you'll have a code tag, You'll have a header, an ordered list, a block quote, an H3, an unordered list, a pre-tag, so on and so forth. So you can compare, you can basically check your styles, right? How many of you, when you were in the Web 200 class, used similar body copy to this kitchen sink thing like I had you guys do in the typography class? Frankie, you did it correctly. All you guys else did it incorrectly. Right? Did you use Lorem Ipsum in your website, um, Joss? Which one? Your Web 200 project? Negative. You used real text? Correct. Ooh, 
Look at you, fancy pants. Right? Good. Um, I recommend when you're doing a WordPress site like this, use use kind of the kitchen sink HTML for body copy so that you make sure that you deal with all those different styles, right? Yeah, yeah. I So when I launch a WordPress site these days, what I'm actually giving somebody because it's up to them to write their own text, I am launching basically something that looks like this. Dummy images, tag of legs, with all the levels all the way through header level four, text links, bullets, block quotes, so that I make sure that I put all those styles in my theme. Does that make sense? But then, yeah, I hand this off to them because then it's their responsibility to put in the text, the written text. Okay. So another version of something similar like this is a website that never got done. Right? You know, same kind of thing. Yeah. All right. So let's explore this panel a little further now before we go start to put in pages. So again, remember this is the toggle tour toolbar thing where you can expand the toolbar to uh, hold on a second. Oh, okay. Sorry, I got a message from somebody that was like, what? And now after I looked at it, it made sense. I'm not going to go into it. But, yeah. <clears throat> uh, where was I? Okay, so this little toggle toolbar thing right here. I've also, in my school website, added a plugin that um, basically has converted the toolbar to have a whole bunch of other stuff in it, right? Which uh, I kind of like as well. But nonetheless. Going back to this. Because we are in postings, you might notice things like format, right? Um, this is something to do with, remember how in the settings there was that format thing that I was like, yeah, hey, I never use that. Uh, this is kind of, I think, um, something specific to press themes that I never use, so uh, I don't know much about that, nor do I care. Let's close that. But what I do care about is I have here where I can publish it. I can say that it is published. I can edit if it's published or uh, a draft, visibility public, how many revisions, posted on date, so on and so forth. I have categories here. Okay. Currently, remember how we said in the general settings, I'm actually going to close some of these other things here. I'm trying to keep my tabs to a minimum. I'm trying real hard, man. But remember when we did go to settings, reading, writing, 
default post category uncategorized, right? And here is this post format standard. Again, I've never looked into that. I don't really care about it. Nor do I care about posting via email. You guys can, you know what you guys should do? You should post via email and give me a 20 page report on it. Sound good, Frankie? Uh, yeah, send it in via email, right? So, as you might guess, we have categories. So let's go under posts to categories. This is where we have our default uncategorized. If I want to create a new category like news, right, uh, I can. I can give it a parent, I can give it a description. The slug will be the URL friendly version of the name. It's usually all lowercase and has hyphens, in other words. Nonprofits, artists, educators, blah, 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 blah. This is the slug. Okay. So basically, WordPress will convert any uh, title case, upper, lower case with spaces, et cetera, to be all lower case with hyphens between it. So, pop quiz. Why not underscores? Why hyphens? Who can answer that for me? There's no extra credit for that, Emilio, I'm sorry. But you're not even in this class, so whatever. He's crashing. Which might be beneficial, but the defining characteristic is this. I don't think it's like this anymore, but come search, you know, for search engine optimization, hyphens, Google would read word hyphen word as word space word. Underscores were read as one long word. So the words weren't read as separate words. So for search engine optimization, people adopted the hyphen naming convention. Okay. Now, I think Google knows better and treats uh, underscores as spaces now in search engine optimization. But that's where that convention comes from, okay? So that's why. Have you ever wondered why people use dashes or hyphens instead of underscores? You guys don't smoke pot, stay up late at night thinking about that kind of stuff? Who's with me? Anybody? No? To do what? It's just me? It's what? <laughs> thinking about how big the universe is? Yeah. Right? Your logic board starts to short a little bit. You're like, no? I know, I know. All I'm saying, Ron, is I got way too much up here, man. Right? Just it's getting full. It's totally getting full. So back here to categories. So if I create a category called news and I add that there, the slug is gonna be news. Okay. So uh, now, if I go back to my posting, right now it's uncategorized. I think that's really unprofessional, so I'm going to go edit that and edit it, the category to news, say update. Uh, I'm not going to put any tags in, right? We're not going to use tags in here, but, you know, you can use tags. Tags are, I don't know. Categories are where it's at for me. Tags are kind of strange. But let's notice this. Yeah, an article can only, uh, uh, post can only be in one category, right? No. Oh, A post can have multiple categories. Oh, I see. Okay. So, but if you have multiple categories and you want your URL structure to write the category up here, it's going to choose the first category. Okay. Right? So... Um, 
let's so let's do this. If we visit the site, right? Right now, this is the home page. And it shows all the content in the posting on the home page. Okay? Instead of headline, excerpt, headline, excerpt, right? Here's what not to do. The subtitle of this class is called Here's What, Here's what Not to Do, okay? Don't do this. Don't, oops, put it right there. Don't use the insert read more thing. Right? If you do that, it'll mimic the headline excerpt thing. So if we go to the home page, it'll look like it has an excerpt and a continue reading. However, it's not a true excerpt, meaning if I look at this, well, let's actually go to my business site. Let's talk about this one. So in this one, if I view page source, you see this keyword dense meta description. Convert your pixel perfect 960 grid website layout, responsive design, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If I go to the feed here. This is the excerpt on the home page. This image is going up there and it's bugging me. I'll have to figure that out. These are the excerpts. So excerpts are handcrafted, reusable summaries that we're going to use in our theme. How many of you took the writing for the web class? You did, Bella, right? Okay, so remember when we talked about meta descriptions? Okay. Unfortunately, if we go back here and say edit post right so let's get rid of that more thing don't don't do that it's a fake excerpt thing we don't have In other words, to get that, here's the field right here, okay? That then when I'm in code, I'm going to use the function get excerpt to get that meta box called excerpt. Where is it? It's not here. This is another thing that bugs me about WordPress, which is also a subtitle of this class. Screen options. See screen options up here? You might want to turn some of these on. These are the meta boxes, right? So what do we mean by meta boxes? In each post type, so if I update this now, in each post type, these are meta boxes, okay, that are useful in adding content to your site, okay? So this one, the excerpt, we will be using later on, okay? For right now, let's just leave that read more thing out of it, and our website is gonna look annoying for a while, and the blog feed is just gonna show the whole article. We'll get over that because we'll change it later. But nonetheless, that's a posting. 
a timely piece of content used in the blog. Let's talk about pages now. Pages. Again, pages are the kind of bread and butter of your content. I've got a photo missing here. It's going to bug me. The bread and butter of your content, right? How your website's content is organized into uh, main pages, sub pages, et cetera, et cetera, okay? As well, pages typically are things that you navigate through the main menu, like I wanna see your services. You have a few different services, great. You have a case study or a tutorial that goes to a posting, cool. So if I go back to the dashboard, just like postings, I have a set of pages that I can create. So currently we have a sample page. What do you think we should do with that? Yeah, we don't need it. Move it to the trash, I go to the trash, I select it, I empty trash gone. And again, here, I can do two different things. I can add new here, or I've just gotten used to going up to this menu up here. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to create a page. My site map that I'm going to adhere to for my little demo is along the lines of my business site map. I'm going to do about I'm going to do, I'm not going to do services, so I'm going to do about, portfolio with some subpages, blog, and contact. So I'm going to put the about title in there. I'm going to go back to HTML Ipsum. I'm going to go back here. Again, I'm going to go to text, not visual, because I have HTML in there. Paste it in there. Now I can go back to visual and then put something like that in there, right? I'm not going to read that aloud, it's inappropriate, but just know that one time I snuck that sentence into an email that I was writing to my mother. And she called me. She's like, I don't understand the sentence. And she read the sentence aloud over the phone. I really wish I kept that recording on my voicemail because it was really, really funny. Has anybody ever made anybody read that aloud at a bar late at night? Do it. One person gets it. <clears throat> Just like um, postings, we have meta boxes, right? The meta boxes, in terms of pages, though, we don't have categories, right? So meta boxes or pages are not timely timely content that we are giving categories, right? Instead. I'm going to actually erase that. That's probably too inappropriate. I forgot I ever wrote that. Update it. See, it's gone. It's not there anymore. Never was. Never was. It's totally inappropriate. Uh, screen options. 
again, I can put some of these boxes, right? I have a tendency to just turn them all on. Okay, so. They will be left on now. Now that I've turned them on for both postings and pages, right? They should be on. So I shouldn't have to turn them on again. And I'm going to try not to giggle when I say that. Thanks, Adam, for that look. Notice, though, that there is no excerpt on pages. That's a bummer. Another thing, remember the subtitle of this class is What Bugs Me About WordPress. Okay? I they should have excerpts for pages on by default. They don't. We're going to have to turn that on in our functions file later on. Okay? But now if I go to this pages menu, I see my one page in there. I'm going to go create some others. New page. Portfolio, kitchen sink, view page, there's my portfolio page, right? Notice, though, I don't have any navigation yet. We'll get there. Pages, portfolio. New page. I want to make a subpage to portfolio. Old logos. Over here, now that I've started creating pages, notice that I have a, a little drop down for choose a parent page. I'm going to choose portfolio. I'm going to publish. I'll talk about this order thing here in a second. Was anybody looking at this and wondering what it was? Yes. Totally. Good. You're the only one that looks like you're paying attention. Everybody else is just kind of, you know, off into new page, print, new page. Websites, and you can create the, your page structure based off of your whatever you want to do. You can make it up if you want. Cats, dogs, unicorns, I don't care. New page. This is where I'm going to add a page for a blog that I'm going to utilize later. While I'm at it, I'm going to need a home page as well. Remember, we're going to have a static home page down the line. Should I add a home page now or later, Thaddeus? Do it now. Do it now? Notice I'm not going to paste any text here on the contact page. Instead, what do I want to put here in the contact page? Contact form. Contact form. 
Good thing. Remember when we did our contact form so we can take that short code? Now that I've been adding pages, right, here are all our pages in our page tree editor or list, page tree list view, or I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Go to the contact page. In the visual portion of the editor, I'm going to put the short code in there. Remember how we talked about, about short code, right? Update. Okay. Now, unfortunately, what I just noticed when I went here to my page tree, I didn't make print and website subpages. So I know that logos is a subpage because it's under portfolio and it has this little M dash there. So I can go to print, I can go to edit it, I can go to parent, hit portfolio, and update it. Go back to pages. Now it has the little M dash by it. You can go to websites, say edit, parent portfolio, update it. It now has the parent page portfolio. But what I am noticing when I am going to my pages, my permalinks look like they are the default permalinks or the ID number permalinks. I'm going to change my permalink structure from plain to day and name. Save changes. So now the permalink structure has the title up here and then the gateway page title up there. Does everybody see that? Portfolio websites. So now if I view this page, websites, portfolio, under the WordPress folder. Make sense? Mm -hmm. I typically use The day and name one. I don't know why. I just do. And the day is the day when you create. Correct. So if it's if we're looking at postings, right? So in other words, if I go and we're at the home page, and this is now um, the uh, feed. So 419 2017. So today and name. And then it gives me the slug, lorem ipsum, delor sediment, all lowercase with hyphens in it. Okay? Moving on. Navigation. Well, let's go back here to the creating content with WordPress lecture. Congratulations, you guys. If you got through that, you have completed the creating pages and postings in your website. If we go to this editing and formatting text in WordPress lecture, we've done a little bit of it. We'll continue to keep on doing stuff. But basically, we've discussed the kind of these screenshots are from an older version of WordPress. But we've discussed we've we've discussed the right sub panels, rich text editor, formatting your text. We've opened the little kitchen sink thing. We have talked about the visual pane. I think we bolded something, you know, it's basically your, you know, you can bold, make italic, paragraph, et cetera, underline, 
Uh, we didn't do a text link. We'll do that later. We're not there yet. We will talk about the featured image. Okay. I know you're excited, Ron. I appreciate that. I know. Dude, I love that. I think that's great. Um, so here's the HTML tab where it used to be, say, HTML, but now it says text. I could swear they changed it to code for a while. I wish they really would leave it as HTML or code. Text just kind of sounds weird. Uh, we are going to skip over uploading and using images, and we will do that on Thursday. Uh, for the remainder today, let's just create navigation and menus in WordPress, and let's talk about it. There are two different ways to create menus and navigation in WordPress. One is the old-fashioned way, which we are going to utilize down the road. If I go to my GitHub repository for my school theme, And I go to my functions PHP file. Here is the function for my main menu. Okay. The core part of this is I am utilizing the list pages function. That's the original way WordPress used to do menus and navigation schemas is you would have to use the list pages function and then exclude, include, or exclude stuff you didn't want, right? And or order things how you wanted them ordered, okay? So we go to, we Google WP list pages. This function takes quite a many uh, arguments, et cetera, right? So you can see that you can exclude pages, you can give them titles, so on and so forth, right? So how I've done my school website is, up here you will see main pages. I'm using a function called get pages that goes in and looks for the pages post object. And I am passing an argument through there saying meta key, navigation, meta value, main. So if we're here on this particular page, notice that this menu item is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tenth down under the lectures section. So if I edit this page, it is tenth down, and I've used a custom field to say navigation lecture. Okay. All of these pages from syllabus, through videos, through all these lectures, through all these assignments, students, are sub-pages to the main page of Web 170. If I edit page Web 170, order is zero because I'm having my main navigation list out alphabetically. I'm telling it to go into the main navigation area by saying navigation main, okay? So I've used custom fields to, and we'll use custom fields later on, to segregate my sets of pages whether they're main, sub, utility, sub, put in the lecture area, put in the assignment, et cetera, by custom fields, right? So this again is a hard-coded function that presents my main menu structure. This is the old-fashioned. 
This is the old fashioned way. Okay. We're going to use this function down the road just to show you. Not to this extent, right? But nonetheless, we're going to still use it. The other way to use navigations, make navigations, menus, to make navigations, that sounds kind of funny, to utilize navigation as whatever, is this main menu right here and this footer menu right here are being called using the newer way of doing things. Using the WP nav menu function. Okay. This WP nav menu function is the function that then controls the navigation schema through appearance menus. Okay. So back after I created my school site to begin with, WordPress instituted this menus system. I have a love-hate relationship with this menus system. The love part is that it's easy to push and pull stuff around. The hate part is it's easy to pull and push stuff around so your clients think that they can just start adding stuff and they can futz with the information architecture that you went through a research process to develop. And they have no regards for you and your master's degree in usability and research design. They just add pages willy-nilly like they want to after you've worked so hard on it. So Thank you. To, like, um, no. Access control limit? No. You know, Not that I'm aware of. I mean, I could give them uh, more limited roles. You know, instead of being an administrator, right. I can give them like a, a author role, etc. But it's their website. You know, it's their product, man. So one of them has to be an administrator. But then they're going to screw stuff all up. And what you have to do is just go build a snowman. Hashtag let it go. But then they can hire you back to fix it. True. Yeah. But like I said, uh, the good thing about a content management system is that clients can create, update, and maintain their own content. The bad thing about a content management system is you are giving access to the client to create, maintain, and update their own content. That's not fine. But from our point of view, we can just stick with the, the good part of this being easy to push and pull around. Okay. Correct. My school site is so big and the taxonomy is so elaborate that what I did was I found a way to engineer it through logic versus is every time you create a new page, it doesn't automatically show up in the net menu. You have to then add it to the menu, right? So every time I create a new lecture page, it'll in my school site, it'll automatically show up because I've told it where to show up. I don't have to then go to a separate menu system and add it in there. So again, you know, two different ways of doing things. They all, both of them have their pros and cons. For my school website, uh, hand coding the function through the, the logic that I set up has worked out really well for me. Um, and doing it this way for my business site because it's a smaller site has worked out really well for me. So they both have their own pros and cons. So if you notice here, I have two different menus, one for footer links and one for main menu. So dependent on the theme that you have, you are going to have different locations, right? So in my theme, my business theme here, I have a location for main menu, I have a location for footer menu, because 
in my functions file, I have registered main menu and footer menu. Okay. If I look at the 2016 theme that I'm now using, This theme has registered as well two different menus. Primary menu, social links menu. So what I need to do then is Create menus and then manage the locations given the theme. So you can have registered a location for a menu and then set up a menu that you have to put that menu in a location. So if and when you have menus that you've put into a location with one theme and then you activate a different theme, your menu system might break because you have to reset that menu to a certain location, given the different themes. Does that make sense? Frankie, did that ever happen to you in the, in the 210 class? Uh, Where your menu system broke and then you had, uh, yes. like when you were building your theme? We, we had multiple times, and like even during the internship a little bit. Yeah. Because, yeah, something happened and you had to like reconfigure your menu system, yeah. okay? So what we're going to do then now is in my section two demo here, we're going to go to dashboard, appearance, menus. I don't have any menus set up. I'm going to give this menu a name. I'm going to go out on a limb and name it main menu. because I'm experimental like that. Notice I have all these pages over here. So it's saying, hey, you have a whole bunch of pages. Want to use those in your menu? And I'm going to say, contact, check. Blog, check. Portfolio, websites, print, logos, check. About, check. I'm not going to use home. Only old people expect the home link in the main menu. No offense against old people. I no offense against old people, Sylvia. I'm getting there myself, right? <laughs> I'm going to add these to menu. Once I add them to the menu, they're right here. So now what I have to do is I have to organize them. Okay, so now I don't have to use that little order dialog box. I can just order them right here. Matter of fact, I can make things in my menu that aren't even pages. So for my footer menu, in my business site, I put custom links for my address, my phone number, and an email address down in my footer menu. Why? Because I could, right? In my blog, I have categories instead of pages. So that's the good thing about this menu system is that you can use a combination of pages, categories, custom links to set things up, right? But again, if you give access to a client to do that, they're not going to follow uh, usability standards. They're not going to look at Jacob Nielsen's 10 heuristics. They're just not, right? And you're going to feel like, why did I even get that degree? I mean, if you got one like that, right? <clears throat> Save menu. Now that I've saved the menu, I have to tell the menu where to show up. Again, this theme 
comes with primary menu. There's a hotline. What happens if I, oh, nothing. Oh, it's got the thing. Primary menu, social links menu. So I'm going to say, assign the main menu to the registered primary menu. Save changes. Now that I've done that and I go and I view this theme, your theme that you're using, how many of you are using a different theme than 2016? Okay. Your theme may or may not even have menus registered, right? If it doesn't have a place where you can assign menus to a location, choose a theme that does. So maybe you might want to go back to using just one of the default out of the box WordPress 2014, 15, 16, 17 themes, right? So now this is where that menu shows up because if I then go to the header file for 2016, Oh, that's the one for social. Here is where then in the header.php file it says WP nav menu, theme location, primary. Give it a class of primary menu. Okay, so we will be able to call a registered menu Right. In other words, the location where we registered, this is the slug for our main menu that we, that I registered in my business theme. I'm giving it a container div tag with an ID of navigation. Does that make sense? So I can call a menu and I can give it tags and class or give it whatever tags I want to use and classes and IDs that I want to use. Right so that when I inspect this menu, it's in a div with the ID of navigation. Make sense? Okay. But for now, this is as far as we're going today, right? But that's basically postings, pages, and a menu system, right? And uh, we'll talk about images on Thursday and add a, add a hot link in our text and have some lab time on Thursday. But um, so so the jazz hands. Deliverable of the, our content then is a page, a page is some time for every page that we intend. Let's go take a look at the create your content and menu system. Assignment. Create pages for your site. Whatever you had as your site map. Now, do yourself a favor, put in sub pages to a parent page because we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna show you how to code sub pages using the WP list, uh, list pages function in your sidebar, okay? Again, you can make something completely up from scratch. Give yourself, you know, four main pages, one of those pages has a few sub pages, at least, and give yourself one posting, right? So set up content for those pages, and then set up your menu system. So I have a question. Uh, okay. Sure. So one menu appears to be but turned around. A little like the first one. I have a homepage. Okay, I'll take a I'll, I'll take a look at it here in a minute. Uh, so, any questions? This is WordPress so far. 
It's going to get fun when we get into coding. Dude, this is a money maker for you guys, man. Seriously. All websites, all small business, nonprofit websites should just be built on WordPress, right? What is it, 20, 25% of the web uses WordPress now? 27. 27. Jeez. I continuously go to website after website and view source code. And if I see WP dash something in there, it's a WordPress site. So, in other words, if we look at, at my site here, we view page source. If you see this, WP content, themes, that's how you can tell it's a WordPress site. Hmm. You can and try to break in if you want. I didn't say Or if they have extra security where they have an HT access file on as well on the admin. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the video. How should we sign off today? Jazz hand. Oh wait. Do I have to do the camera? No? Cancel? This thing? Jazz hands. Oh, there it is.